This video is about the difference in the Eastern and Western outlook. Um, and I'm talking about it so that we Westerners can expand our worldview. Okay, so somebody wise, I can't remember who it was, said uh, that the West really understands the inner logic of machines and the East really understands the inner logic of the spiritual journey. So, you know, here in the West, our, you know, when I grew up, we, you know, went to church at least a little, and we, you know, everybody's together singing songs, listen to somebody speak encouraging words for a bit, and there's this group high that happens. But in the East, it's it's more um you know you go to temple and you might it's more of an inner communication to to the deity to who you're worshiping it's more from the private inside out and you know ours there is that you know the private you know prayer time and everything but the church experience is 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 quite extrovert extroverted and in the east there's this focus on a very private connection to the divine is some of this is this hard to put into words a bit because it's like a pervading atmosphere in both the countries so you know as part of this we have um, our psychological uh, development has been the focus on the ego which even you know many people know comes on about to um, really to try to protect us and that's our idea in the West that's been our eye our idea of the I now, in the East, they don't talk about the ego so much. They talk about mind. Now, in the East, the concept of mind includes everything. It includes the ego. It includes the body of the person. It includes how they see life. Um, I remember once having the experience of making a shift and suddenly Mother Nature felt closer to me. I felt closer to Mother Nature. Okay, so that would be a shift out of mind. And in the Western, that would be a shift out of the ego in the sense of that if my ego got a little bit smaller, I would be more able to feel my connection to all that is. So there's, it's like it kind of overlaps, but they are quite different approaches. So in the East, they, they talk about that enlightenment occurs when the person grows beyond their mind, where the mind dissolves, basically, and that person is walking around in their soul energy. They are totally at peace. They're totally in, have an inner silence. They have no agenda. They just basically are an instrument of their soul. So they're, they're, walking around as a soul in human form. Now, in the West, I mean, we talk about self-actualization, but we don't really talk about it very much. We just say, you know, when the person is expressing their, their themselves, their, their talents, their true self. But we don't go into anything like the detail the East goes into about what self-realization is. And the other thing, in the West, we have no idea how to get there. In the East, they have thousands of years of spiritual traditions of people moving, you know, through, you know, their ego or mind um, to achieve self-realization and how this is done. Now, in the East, they will, uh, they focus on the relationship between the student and the guru uh, and the, you know the 
the premise is that Gru's enlightened. Um, and then this, the, the Gru basically mothers or fathers that seeker until enlightenment is achieved. It's a very close bond. It's, in fact, the, the way the student uh, uh, moves into self-realization is they allow themselves to deeply love the guru. They, they start noticing how much the guru loves and serves them, is loving and serving their journey into enlightenment. And as a result, the defenses fall away and the, the student begins to feel the God within. They stop, um, they drop the defenses that we, you know, protect ourselves with, you know, in both the East and West. But in the West, we're, we're more um, extrovert. We're more like focused on the outer so it's been um, it's been sort of hard for us to shift to focus on the inner. There's quite a lot of confusion, I feel, and even confusion about how to teach people to do this. Now in the in the East, they've they've learned how to industrialize. Um, so it's really for us to learn how to go inward and to maybe pay attention to some of the the wisdom that's there. Um, and, you know, hopefully more authentic teachers will surface in, in the West because I feel we really need authentic teachers who really know what they're talking about because the spiritual journey is, is so difficult and it be, can be so confusing and it just makes it worse if your teacher's confused too. It just, <laughs> you know, that happened to me a few times. So before I found really good quality teachers. Anyway, I hope all this makes sense, sort of, at least a bit. Okay, bless your hearts.